Now today I'm going to show you how to make these little line bracelets with embellishing herringbone as you make it. It's really simple, moves really fast, and it's a really pretty project in the end. Now, um, I've, sh I've made two varieties. I made one with 11 O's and bicones and 6 O seed beads, and one with 2 by 3 rondelles, 15 O's, and 6 O seed beads. So you can, and I show you how to do both and discuss the differences so that whatever beads you have on hand, you are able to use because not everybody has all the same stuff. So I just wanted to make sure that there was a couple of choices with this. And if I can get this on, I'll show you what they look like. They look really nice on and they stack really nice too. So that's what these look like. And let's go ahead and look at the material list. Okay, for this project today, I'm going to show you a couple of options which you can use for your beads because you can do this in several different ways. So basically, you're going to need a 6-0 seed bead. Now you can use any type of 6-0 seed bead you want, mine or Toho. They're very uniform for the most part. Um, but you can use those cheap seed beads we all bought when we very first started. Just go through those seed beads and pull out the really skinny or the really fat ones and try to make them as uniform as possible. That way you can use up some of those 6 O's. So I'm using a bronze, metallic bronze um, Toho for this particular project. Then you'll need a crystal. Now I'm using a 2 by 3 Chinese crystal here. And um, you can also use a three millimeter bicone. So I've got this out over here. Now I'm going to use a 15 ounce seed bead with my embellishment crystal on this particular project because it's working really well with the round. Plus the six O's tend to be a little bit different size. So sometimes the 15 O will fall into the six O's and you can't use it. So with this one over here, this is the colorway I'm doing. I have a three millimeter bicone crystal, and it's a Swarovski. I have six millimeter Toho's, but these are the galvanized silver, and the hole is bigger. The bead itself is bigger than this Toho. So what I've done is I've decided to use an 11 -0 seed bead with it. So you can either use an 11 -0 or a 15 -0. You can use a bicone crystal, which is a three millimeter here, or a two by three Chinese crystal, which is a rondelle, or even a three millimeter round crystal or fire polish should work. They just need to be a very small bead. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to do this one, but I wanted to show you, and I will finish this one and show it to you in the end too. I wanted to show you what it looks like with a bicone and an 11 -0. Just a little bit different look, but they both turn out really pretty. But this gives you more options with your beads. So that's what I wanted to show you. So what we're going to use in this tutorial is a 6-0 seed bead, Toho Metallic Bronze. I'm using kind of a golden silver color um, electroplated 2x3 Chinese crystal. I'm using a 15-0 seed bead, and this is the galvanized starlight. It's um, galvanized gold tone in the Toho line. And then I'm going to use a small clasp because this is kind of a line bracelet style. So I'm going to use a small toggle. You could also use a lobster claw if you want these to be stackable bracelets. And the in toggle sometimes get in the way. So you could use a jump ring and a... Um, uh, lobster claw. So that's up to you. And then on this one, I'm going to just use this small round. These are about a half inch in diameter so that you know what I mean by small. So let's go ahead and get started. You all, you will, I'm also going to use eight pound fire line and I'm going to use a size 12 beading needle with my 15 nose. You can use a size 10 also. It just depends on how well your 15 O's slide over it. I happen to have a very large hole. Tens, when I bought the tens, they are bigger. So I've been using 12 when I use my 15 O's, but you can use a size 10 generally. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, to start this project, 
Thread onto your needle a wingspan of thread. That's when you stretch your arms out side to side. You measure your first arm from your fingertips across the length of your arm, across the length of your chest, across the length of your second arm to your fingertips. That is a wingspan. You will more than likely need to add thread to this project. So I will post a link below on a video that will show you how to do that. And I will probably also show you how to do that in this particular video simply because you need to avoid the 15-0 seed beads when you extend your fire line. So <clears throat> to start this project, pick up three 8-0 seed beads onto your needle. Bring them down to the end of your thread, leaving a 6 to 8 inch, probably an 8 inch, maybe even a 10 inch tail. And then we will come back through the first seed bead and just the first one we put on on the tail side. Hold on to that bead and pull your thread through. So you end up with a little triangular shape like this. Get you a little closer. Hold on to your tail and your beads and then we're going to sew back through this. So go down into the bottom bead, go straight up into this one so that it makes the shape that we want. Then I'm going to turn it just a little bit and I'm going to go through this top bead where my tail is, ignoring my tail. And then when I get it through, I'm going to pull on both the tail and the working thread so that it secures it somewhat and it won't slide quite as much. This is what we will begin with. Now we're coming out of this top bead. <clears throat> we're going to go down into this bottom bead right here. And I'm going to turn it to the side so I can work with it a little better. I'm just going to hold the tail out of the way. I'm going to pick up two 6 seed beads. And I'm going to go through just the one bead on the side here next to the one I'm coming out of. And I'm going to tuck the tail under my finger so it's not in my way. And I'm going to pull these beads down. When you pull them down, make sure they arrange whole side up against the two that you are connecting to, like this. This is a herringbone stitch. We're just going to modify it. Now that you've come through the two bottom beads, I want you to pick up a 15-0, or if you're using an 11-0, pick it up, and then your crystal, whatever you've decided to use for a crystal, and then a 15-0 or 11-0 just like this. Now I'm going to get just a little closer and I am going to cross my thread over and I'm going to go up through the bottom bead next to the one I'm coming out of. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to go into this one and the one on top of it like this. And I'm going to hold on to it and pull my thread through. Now you want to kind of have your thumb there to guide your embellishment over the top. The first one is a little fidgety and it loosens a little so just pull it up until it's laying there nicely. <clears throat> then pick up two eight or six o seed beads. You're coming out of this side now we're just going to go down into one bead next to the one that we're coming out of. Pull these down, lay them out, Pick up a 15-0 or 11-0 and a crystal and a 15-0 and then cross over and go into two beads on this side just like this and pull it down. Now you will find that these 15-0 seed beads want to try to slip between your herringbone stitch so you just have to kind of tighten it and arrange it. If they're slipping to, through too badly, that means you have a really wide hold um, 6-0 and you probably would be better off with an 11 seed bead. So just kind of judge that. <clears throat> then pick up two 6 seed beads, or yes, 6 seed beads. Cross over, go down into one on the side next to where you're coming out of and pull. Now this is all going to loosen and do weird things in the beginning. It won't after we get several stitches. But just tighten it by pulling your thread and arranging your beads and pick up a 15-0 and then a crystal and then a 15-0 
and then cross over and go up through two beads on this side. Make sure as you pull through, you kind of guide that down. I'm just holding my beads so you can see them. Just kind of guide that down so that the 15 O's go on top of the 6 O's. Tighten your thread and not inside of them. Again, if you can't make them to stop going inside, use an 11 O instead of a 15 O. Pick up two 6 O seed beads. Go down into the bead next to where you're coming out of. Pull them down lay them out, tighten your thread, pick up a 15 O, if I can get one, and a crystal and a 15 O, cross over, go up through two beads. And this is very repetitious and this is all we're going to do through this entire project. Now you can see I'm just kind of trying to guide these up and make sure they go where they need to go. I want my herringbone to stay together otherwise you'll get a curve because your embellishment beads are pushing them apart. So just try to keep them together, tighten it after each stitch and then pick up two 6 o seed beads, cross over, go into one bead, pull them down. It helps if you just hold your piece with your thumb and your finger like this. And then pick up a 15 o, a crystal, and a 15 O up into two beads on this side. Pull it down, arrange, tighten, make sure that your herringbone is staying together and that your top beads are not pulling it apart. Pick up two 6 O seed beads, cross over, go down through one cross over, or excuse me, pick up a 15 O, a crystal, come here crystal, and a 15 O, cross over, go up through two on this side. Now the trick I've learned is just to hold my thumb right here and it just kind of pulls the beads into place. And then I just scoop my eight or my six O's down and just continue doing this. Let's do a couple more and then we'll go to length. You will want to make your chain that we're creating here long enough to, or actually an inch, inch short of the length you want. So if you want a seven inch bracelet, go to six inches. If you want an eight inch bracelet, go to seven inches and so on and so forth. So, and then we'll come back and put the clasping on. So pick up two, 6 O seed beads, come down through one next to where you're coming out, pull these down, and then place your embellishment on the previous set. Pick up a 15 O, a crystal, a 15 O, cross over, slide up through two beads on this side. Hold on to it and guide it. Pull it down on top of the beads, and tighten the beads. You want to make sure it doesn't get too distorted so it doesn't lay funny when we're finished. And that's how that looks. Let's do one more. Pick up two. See now this is a funny shaped bead. I'm going to get rid of it. 6 O seed beads tend to be funnier shaped than any other size even in Japanese seed beads. So like I said just pull out all the funny shaped ones. You can use your cheap ones, just go through them and pull out the weird ones. Go down through this one, pull your beads down, lay them out, pick up a 15 O, a crystal, a 15 O, cross over and go through two beads on this side. kind of guide your beads down however you learn to hold it. I'm trying to hold it so you can see what I'm doing without having my fingers over it, but putting your fingers over it helps a lot to guide it in. Just continue this stitch until you have the length one inch short of the length that you want your bracelet to be. And we'll okay, be back. Okay, so I've decided to go ahead and show you with my other piece that I'm creating also. And with this one, 
I'm using 11 seed beads, Swarovski crystals, and the galvanized aluminum tohos. And these tohos are much bigger than my other tohos. 6 o seed beads, like I said, tend to be really odd. So if you happen to get one with a bigger hole, then I'm just going to show you. You pick up two 8 o seed beads, just like we've been doing. Cross over, go down into the bead next to the one you're coming out of. Pull these down until they lay out. Kind of bring your thread over the top, pick up an 11 o a bicone crystal, and an 11 o and come through. Now with the bicones, they tend to kind of be a little bit more fidgety. So you have to kind of lift it, put it over the top, and pull it down. Then you have to arrange it because they don't fit in there quite the same way that the um, rondelle shape does, so or a round shape does. So you just want to kind of arrange them. They turn out really pretty though. So then I will pick up two more 60 seed beads, odd shapes. Then we'll cross over, bring them down. And you could probably do this with a very small crystal and um, six, eight o seed beads, but uh, everyone always asks me, what do I do with all these huge six o's that I bought before I knew what to do with them? So I wanted to create something for the six o seed beads. And it makes a bigger presence and it lays out really nice and the beads fit well together. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Pick up your embellishment 11 0 crystal 11 0 and go up through and again i'm going to hold on to it i'm holding on to my herringbone portion to make sure it doesn't come apart push this over the top pull it down and that tends to work really nicely so you'll just have to judge whether you use an 11 0 or you use a 15 0 with the 15 0 and the round crystal you get a little bit more embedded look whereas with this one you get a little bit more of a set look so let's go ahead and continue and we'll okay, be back. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to extend Fireline. If you're using Fireline or Nanofill this will work. If you're using other threads you will have to tie on. <clears throat> so I will still post the video below because it shows you how to do both. However, I'm going to show you how to do this now because when you're using 15 seed beads, it, sometimes it's very difficult to pass your extension through it, especially with the 8-pound fire line that I'm using. So I've got my short thread on my piece. I've got a new long piece that I've cut. I'm going to cross the long piece under the short piece on my um, piece of jewelry and then I'm going to take my short piece and I'm just going to bring it under and twist it around my new piece and then I'm going to cross the new piece and the short piece and then I'm just going to cross the short piece under the new piece again just like this this is a square knot I'm tying let me get you closer so crisscross crisscross and pull. Now you want to do this as close to the project as you possibly can. If you can get closer it's better so you don't have to pull your knot through a lot. But I'm trying to show you this so I'm kind of keeping it a little distance. And I'm going to pull on all of these threads until I'm going to pull this side, pull this, pull this, until I get a nice tight little square knot on my thread. And then I'm going to take my ends and I'm going to trim them down. You could pull the longer one down, but I'm just going to trim them down pretty short, maybe even a little bit shorter than that, just so that I have, when I pull it through, I don't have a whole lot of thread. Then I'm going to take a lighter, and I'm going to put these little ends at the bottom of the flame, just close to it, not lighting it on fire, just very lightly rolling these back. You want your... Uh, little wad that cre that is created to be as small as it possibly can be but it has to be big enough to where when you pull it it won't just pull apart so now 
I'm just going to pull these together. So I'm pulling on this side and this side, and you can see it creates a very tiny little knot and very strong. It will not break. Your piece will not fall apart. And this is the best way, if you're using Fireline or Nanofill, to go ahead and extend your Fireline. Then <clears throat> I am going to put my needle back on. Now if you've noticed in this particular pattern when I did this, I have my two sets of um, 60 seed beads here. So I just put this set on. I'm going to put another, or I just put my embellishment on. I'm coming up through it and I'm going to put my next set of 60s on. That m makes it, if you do it at that point, to where you're traveling through the 60s with your knot and not the 15 0, hopefully. So now I'm going to thread my needle on. and slide it through here. Now my needle is on. So I'm coming through here. I'm going to pick up my next two. So you're just at the stage where you're about ready to pick up two more of your 60 seed beads. Then you're going to come down and at this point, just to hide this knot, I'm going to come down three instead of two or instead of one, actually, I'm coming down three. That way, let me move that 15 -0 out of that bead there. That way I can um, hide my knot. So now I've come down three, I'm going to cross over, I'm going to pull, and I'm going to guide it in front of my embellishment, pull it down in, and now my knot is in my 60 seed beads, and not anywhere available to where I have to pull it through a 15 0 seed bead. So now all I have to do to continue is come back down through this side. Then I can pick up a 15 0, a crystal, a 15 0, and slide back over. And this is just showing you how to manipulate your thread around so that you don't end up having to try to pull it through a 15 0 seed bead when you put your embellishment on. Once you have it extended and it's inside a 6 0, you don't have to worry about it. But if you extend it and, and you go to put your embellishment on and the knot's right there, it's going to be very difficult. You're going to get frustrated and mad at me. So I decided to show you that. Continue making okay. your piece. So as you can see, I am right at six inches because I want a seven inch bracelet. Now, if you don't really know what size is what, six inches is generally considered small, seven inches is considered medium, and eight inches is considered considered large. I like to make mine right around seven or just a tiny bit over seven. And that works well for me because I have a six and a half inch wrist. So you want to judge from there. If you're making it for someone else and they're a larger person and you want to go, you will want to go in the eight inch range. If they're medium size, seven. If they're very small, six. And that's a pretty good guide to go by. Now that I have finished that, I have put on my embellishment and then I'm coming out of my top bead. This is where I would add two more 8-0's and then come through and add my embellishment here. Instead of doing that, however, I'm going to pick up one 8 seed bead and I am going to go down into my 8-0 um, just like I would if I had picked up two. So go down into one I'm going to put my embellishment on here, so I'm going to pick up a 15-0, a crystal, and a 15-0. And then I'm going to cross over just like I always do, but instead of going up through two on this side, I'll just go up through one. Pull my embellishment down, and then I'm going to sew through this 8-0 seed bead. And just to secure this, because this is a the clasping end, I'm just going to go down into this bead here, just one bead, then I'm going to go over the top of my embellishment and go into this one, and I'm just going to put my thumb over that and guide my thread down into these 8 seed beads, or 6 seed beads, excuse me. 
and then I am going to go up through this top bead here. Then I am going to pick up a couple of 11 O seed beads. So you will need a couple of 11 O's to do this. So it's probably a good idea to have a couple out. So I'm picking up two 11 O seed beads and I'm going to pick up one of my crystals and then I'm going to pick up another 11 O just like this. I will add that in caption to the um, material list to start with too so you know that you'll need that. Then we're going to make this part of the clasp. So I'm just going to go through my clasp, bring it down. I'm going to go through the first 11 O seed bead and the first crystal. So just 11 O and the crystal, just like this. And I'm going to pull this down. And then I am going to pick up two 11 O seed beads. And I'm going to go through the other side. And it should form a triangle, just like this. It's arguing with me a little. There we go. So just arrange it until it forms a nice little triangle. And then sew up through all of these beads again. So go through your two 11 O's, your crystal, the 11 O under the clasp, and then through the clasp. And then come back through the 11 O, the crystal, and the two 11 O's on this side right here. Pull through, arrange it, come back into your 8 OC or your 6 OC bead. I do not want to call this a 6 O for some reason. Sew through that one more time, come through your 6 O, and we'll be back. Okay, so this extension that I've created, I'm designing our clasping as we do this may give me a little bit more than an inch by the time I do the other side too. So you may want to make your bracelet just a little under six inches if you're trying to make a seven inch bracelet. But if you want it to be about seven and a half inches, then this will probably work fine. Plus my clasping is very oval, so that's going to give me more length anyway. If I had a little tiny small one, it would be different. Or if you put a little lobster claw or something else on here, or you can also just put one 11 -0 on either side, but it doesn't make it quite as pretty. Anyway, those are just some hints. Now, I'm coming out of the 6 -0 seed bead. I'm going to turn my piece over like this. I'm going to go down into this first 8 -0 seed, or 6 -0 seed bead, pull my needle through, and you're going to have to aim it out to the side because it's a herringbone, so you need to go out that way. Then there's a little piece of thread right here in between the beads. We're going to go under that piece of thread right here. Pull your thread until it creates a loop and put your needle through it and pull a knot down on that thread bridge. And then sew through one more of your 8 o or your 6 o seed beads. Man, these should be 8 o's. I don't know. Go through it. Grab a hold of the next thread bridge. Tie a knot and pull it down. And then go through a couple of the beads on the side here. You can knot it as many times as you want. I'm just going to go through a couple of them and then I'm going to cut my thread off right here. I'm going to leave a small tag of thread sticking up and I'm going to put it close to the flame of my lighter and just melt it down. I'm not going to light it on fire, just melt it in. It'll suck up into one of those 6 -0 seed beads. Oh, I thought I got out of camera. So I turned it off to see the play back, but it was fine. And your, um, it does go right up into the 6 -0 seed seed beads, the little blob that you create with your lighter and it makes a really nice finish. Now, because we did not clasp this side, we need to clasp this side. So you will get your needle and put it on to the thread on this side that you left. And we will do the same thing on this side. The smoke colored fire line makes my fingers all dirty. Okay, 
So, just an observation. Anyway, I knew that already anyway, but anyway. Now, I have put my thread on my needle, and I'm coming out of this 60 seed bead here with my tail, and I am going to do the exact same thing that I did on the other side. I'm going to pick up two 11 O seed beads. I'm going to pick up a crystal, and I am going to pick up the other end of my clasp, and I'll drop these down, go into my clasp, and I need another 11 O. So two 11 O's, a crystal, and an 11 O, like this, and then go into my clasp, And then I'm going to come back. Let me turn this this way just so I can actually reach it. I'm going to come back through the first 11 O and the crystal here. I'm going to hold on to them and pull my thread through, pull my clasp down to the 11 O's, and then I'm going to pick up two more 11 O's. And pull it down. And now just like the other side, go ahead and sew through this again once or twice and then turn it over and go on to the thread bridge and tie a couple of knots and we'll be back. And here is my pretty finished piece and it is measuring, you want to measure through half of the round side of the toggle, put it on halfway through the first mark here and that will give you an accurate amount and it's measuring about um, seven inches and a quarter, which is actually pretty right on perfect for me so because it does take up a little room on your wrist too so and I don't like them to be extremely tight I like some movement so for me this fits really well really nice and it turned out really pretty that's if I, you did this with some bright red crystals I wanted some I didn't have any little tiny red crystals but I think that would be really pretty with the bronze and the red or even silver and clear or almost any color combination you could make it um really colorful using like purple six o's and you know a pink crystal something like that too that would be really cute too I just tend to stay with the metallics because I like them but this is what the clasping looks like and that's what that looks like I'll be back to show you the other piece when I finish it. okay so as you can see I put them both on I finished them both the rondelles lay in there a little bit nicer than the bicones, but the bicones work fine too. It turns out really pretty, and they're nicely stackable. Even though I put um, toggles on, they work really good. I was going to put a silver toggle on this one, but it was kind of bulky down in this area, so I changed my mind and put on this one. But I think it turned out really very pretty. Now, I used smoke fire line with this, and because I did, you can't really see the thread at all. So, I would say use smoke fire line with these, unless you're using really, really light beads, then of course use crystal. But that turns out really nicely. Let me show you um, what this one looks like off the wrist, and that's what they look like. I hope you enjoy making one for yourself or two or 20 doesn't matter have a happy easter stay well bye bye